And welcome back to the Super Coach Experience. You're here with Mikey, the co- coach of Trip Jacket Mafia, and we're here on Sunday to wrap up round three. Great for some. Uh, if your name's me, um, it was horrible. Um, another tough week for me. Yet to crack a thousand. Uh, really, oh, I switched to trades. I switched from Tedesco. 140 points instead. I brought in all Kalat too, and I sold Harry Grant. And oh man, like I'm just, I'm just kicking myself, but. Look, it is what it is. I'll recover. Um, but Jay, uh, I've got as always. I've got my co-host here. Someone did a lot better than me. Jake, how are you, mate? Uh, yeah, like you said, a lot better than you, Mikey. I've finally cracked a thousand for the first time this year. Uh, at the moment, it's ten seventy six. I end up looping Val Holmes, which is the reason I'm. I kind of ended up with a somewhat decent score. Had a lot of stinker scores in there as well. So, it's because that was kind of saved by one player. Um, trade wise, I didn't do anything too drastic this week. It was kind of um, get on players I kind of had to that were about to go up in price. So no crazy bring ins. Um, so I was happy with the score. I guess I got yeah nine fifty six to me was a pretty lean week. But I'm just kind of looking ahead. I guess we'll get into it. But like front row carnage, a lot of front rows have gone down. I need to make sure that. You know, both Cotter and May might not make the team next week. And I'm fine with playing Liam Henry, but obviously I'm not willing to play Sam Hughes. I'm hoping only one injury because I'll play Henry while um, Fish is out. Um, and although I'm not a fan of back-to-back boosts, um, it's looking likely that I'm probably going to have to uh, boost again. So I know you might say, oh, settle down, Mikey. But at the same time, till I see myself doing any good, I need to keep on trying and... I need to make some changes, so I need to keep on. I feel like if I keep on stacking my side up and making some changes, it's gonna it's gonna recover. Um, Before we get into the wrap up, Jake, uh, early trade thoughts. I know obviously it's a bit different. I've switched my trade to last week, but they're always they're up to change. Obviously, nothing we say is bind by law, but we've obviously got team list, which, as I just said, um, if both front rollers that I have are out, I'll be changing my trades. But Jake, what's your thoughts? And if you uh, any- well, we got the same front rowers, so I guess that that could affect something as well. I think Galvin, if you don't have him, he's going to be most trading this week. Uh, he's on the bubble, so he'll be going up in price. Bottom, uh, bottom price rookie. So he'll be brought in. I like the look of KPP. We're a bit nervous. I think you got him a couple of weeks ago, so it worked out all right for you. Uh, he was, he One was of kind of a bit of an unknown with good. Lucas coming in, but played eighty. Lucas went to the edge, and Frizz went to the middle. So. Um, KPP looks like, I mean, he'll go up to around the 400k mark, I think, uh, depending what he updates to. But probably to at least 70, up. I think. I still think he's a he's a good pickup at that price for sure. I mean, he banged out at nearly a 70, so I think he's going to be one to bring in for sure. I think of of all the you know mid range options, he's probably one that looks looks the best at the moment. Um, a lot of them are kind of plodding along, not doing much. So I think KP is going to be uh, the one that's coming in. Yeah, I couldn't agree. I guess one of a few things that I, I got right. Um, for me, I'll be doing Flanagan, even though he scored the 71. Without these attacking stats, he's going to have a pretty low four. I really think that I will regret not jumping onto Galvin. So I think um, I'll be happy with taking like a 50K payday from Flano, uh, make 150K going to Galvin. Um, with my trades, one good thing about the trades I did last week, I ended up with 100K in the bank looking to this week. I knew that I would probably want to target the Hammer, and I think my team right now needs some points, and they've got a delicious matchup this week. Um, the Titans are down on troops, and I think without Tino, I'm going to be targeting, as for a way to come back, is targeting teams that are playing the Titans, especially if Fisher, um, sorry, not Fisher, uh, Fafida and Jaden Campbell aren't back. You know, I, I think, I think um, someone like, the hammer could be a sneaky C this week, which is crazy. But I guess that's just kind of what kind of mood mood I'm in because I really think he looked awful in round one, and look what he scored. He's gonna he's got a minus two break even. Um, so with that extra money, I'll be going um, as I just said, Flanagan down to Galvin, and I'll go to Panua. I'm sick of his shit. I'm sick of the Roosters rotation minutes. So I'm gonna be going to Panua up to um, him or. Maybe Dominic Young. I think I prefer a fullback in Hammer, but Dominic Young, if I think I'll be able to afford it, he's very tempting too. I think it's good that Dominic Young's gone nuts because it might split the ownerships because uh, the Hammer's already owned by like 19%. But 
I think it's hard to argue him with their pretty tough draw, their buys done. Um, I really think I'll get him. And then I might boost um, Heinz to Cleary, or if I have a front row problem, I might do one of those front rowers to a Toy Kamanu. Uh, but we'll get into the Heinz chat when we talk about the Sharks. Um, you let us know your trade thoughts. If you have any questions, post it in the thing down below. Um, let's get into our wrap up. Um, so get the scores up, Jake, because we'll go team for team this time. So I'll do one game, you do the second game. All right. So first game, my boys, the Panthers, uh, thirty-four to twelve against the Broncos. Good performance by them. Obviously, another injury. Um, uh, Reese Walsh, he went down, so he's the biggest loser from that game with a one. Uh, a lot of big scorers from this one. Nathan Cleary looked awesome. I was at the game first half. I was like. Geez, this could be one fifty plus easy. In the next half, kind of chilled back a little bit. They didn't score as many points, but um, ends on one twenty one. And as a non owner, um, it hurts. And just the way Hines, that might be a bit of a backwards trade. But I think, I think I need him. It's plain simple. I was going to try and get him. Um, if it means Hines, I really don't like the look of Hines. If he keeps pumping fifties and sixties, he's got to buy soon. He's just going to keep plummeting in price. Like, I might sell Hines and I might not bring him back till I see, you know, yeah, how he performs um, till Sharks kind of work out their their attack. But I just – I don't see him dropping Trindle when I think they, they really need to. But I don't, I don't think they will because they, they did get two wins the week before. But, um, yeah, uh, Brian To'o puts his hand back up and just shows you that he's going to be an option yet again in the centre wing. Uh, Isaac Tago, if you had the balls and jumped on last week, price – at top end of 600k, so like 690 or whatever it is, 100, another double for him. And he just looks awesome. I really did look at him instead of like a Talakai Milotalo, but the fact that they have that buy is what scared me, but I guess it just shows that sometimes taking the risk and taking guy with the buy is still going to work out if they just keep increasing the price because you might not be able to get that same guy because like next week, all these other options just put their hand up instead and you'll go the cheaper ones over them. Um, Isaiah Yo pumped out another 69, and I think the big win um, is Liam Henry, 55. Stepped up, increased in minutes with Fisher Harris out, and a little bit of, uh, not confirmed, but a little bit of inside goss that we got at the experiences um, that Fisher Harris's injury is similar to uh, Munster, where it's like a touch and go kind of thing. They're not really sure. They don't have a plan. Like that. It, It's going to be a week to week thing, so he could be out longer than first fought, and I think they might attempt to play it safe with him uh, as they really need him to be fit. So I think if you need to, Liam Henry could be a play. Do you agree, Jake? Yeah, I mean, what, he got 55 this week. I think you're going to, as long as Fish is out, you're going to expect the same um, minutes and, and yeah, points out that's forward the key. going forward. So, And the way the front row is going, you take that score for sure. So, yeah, I mean, even people that don't own him with all these front rows that, have gone down recently, jumped down to him, and you got a bunch of cash still to, to I guess, spend. So, yeah, definitely a play yeah, I think so too. Um, Taylor May with the 30, I really thought he'd done enough to get that try assist as he did a bit of a step and draw to set up one of those tries, but he didn't get it. I get it. They always give it to the sweeping person, but I think in that instance, um, I think he did enough to create the space, but wasn't to be over the field with the Broncos. Cobo pumps out another 60. Got a try assist, went to fullback. I'm predicting that, obviously, he'll go back to centre and Tristan Saylor will come in at fullback, which I think is a really good re replacement for, for them. So I still they'll think they'll be a competitive side, but these big injuries are stacking up against them. Not sure if Reynolds will be back, but we know that Haas and Walsh won't be. Um, other than that, on the Broncos, there's not really anyone big worth noting apart from like the Walsh one. Um, Piacora, 57, got saved by late try assist, but important to note in that first half, he did get moved to centre, and then they moved him back after Tago was just having a field day there. They moved him back to the other edge. So something also to note, he did get that line break when he was on the edge, or like technically in second row. Uh, anyone else that I'm not mentioning? Maybe Corey Jensen? Uh, well, I mean, you could probably throw him and Xavier Willison, who I thought had a good game. Um, he did get a line break as well, so it's slightly inflated. But, you know, cheap option. Haas is not back for another six-ish week. So could be a cheaper you can jump on. Um, but I guess with front row, you kind of want someone you can safely play. And I don't know with Willison 
if he's going to be a safe play. They, again, lost Walsh, had to do a bit of reshuffling, so more minutes to him kind of um, were forced upon. So don't expect that going forward. Um, but other than that, I mean, no, I thought in terms of just the game, I thought the Broncos were lucky not to be get, not to get 50 put on the way it was going in the first half. Um, the pans are all over him. Just with, I think, Nathan Cleary, you were at the game, Mikey. I was, I was on the hill, so I saw when Nathan Cleary came off. He kept grabbing his hamstring. I think might have been just tightness, so I don't think it's really much to look at. Um, but I think they did pull a half from Reggie's as well today. Yeah, so that, that is today. that is correct. Yeah, the Snyder, like the the Panthers have ruled anything out of happening. They do play smokes and mirrors, but Snyder actually missed that game because of a last minute or like a flu. So it oh, was. Okay. They're saying it was sickness, and that's why, obviously, because Laurie was technically was in the Panther seventeen and played. It was a late a late minute change. Um, look, Penrith for playing the first game, so I guess that's also another positive next week that I can reassess. But the thing is, with how good, like you know, Panthers are just getting warmed up. I think Cleary is very important. Um, where at the moment this Hines, like you know, he's got a different half front. There's a few more question marks where Cleary is just warming up, and he's got that two hundred game coming. And I, and I can feel it. And I know uh, if I don't sell Hines, it's going to be hard to make other moves to get him. And I know a lot of other people in the same boat. I know most season veterans say, hold him. I guess I might be playing a bit rogue because I'm behind. But I, I think I, I really need him because I want him come round seven. Uh, and he always has a field day at Brookie where they go to next week. So I've got a couple of questions before you go over that second game, Jake. Um uh, from we got Gaza Ricky one two three here lads Galvin is literally the cheapy of the year no bit early to crow but I think with the potential the fact is bottom dollar and the Tigers got a big big win on the weekend against your boys Jake um, I think you know that that's going to give him more time and yet again they're playing half through and they started Caesar this time they're not starting this young kid I think I don't know if Benji sees a little bit of himself in him but he's obviously given him an opportunity and um. You know, he's got some try assists in there, but at bottom dollar with two scores of like, what, a 50 and a 60, I think. Yeah, it's, it's even for me with Flanagan. Last week, if, if Flanagan scored 60 last week, I probably don't do it. But Flanagan showed us what he's going to do without attacking stats. So uh, I'll grab the money and run. Um, this for you, Jake. Michael Breers, I hate Trindle since he turned up behind stinks. I, I also hate Trindle. The, the whole – the first three weeks I've been hating on Trindle. I've been posting in the chats all over the place saying, get rid of him. Interesting thing, actually, um, the Sharks did pull K Dykes from um, reserve grade uh, this week. Um, so that's something, I guess, maybe they're looking to, to get rid of Trindle. I mean, he's not helping the side. He's only hindering him. And they're not really doing much in attack. So, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully Trindle can... Um, That'd be huge. Disappear. Yeah. Uh, with Michael Breers again. Uh, Hammer is a trade this week for Tua Picky. Was going to trade out Salmon, but Tua Picky injured and now, and CK will ruin them. Um, yeah, Tua Picky's not injured. He's just failed his HIA, so he'll miss a week. But uh, CK is not guaranteed to come back in round five. He's touch and go. Uh, he hasn't made enough money for me. Tua Picky's not a problem. I'm, I'm going to hold on to him for now until a cheapie comes along. If, um, the Parramatta cheapy that debuted today looked awesome. If he, uh, Tualangi, whatever, Blaze, if he keeps his spot, I probably could see myself doing a tour picky to Blaze in two weeks. But that obviously means he's got to hold his spot over some of the guys coming back. But I thought he was awesome. Uh, I'll come back to questions at the end, guys. And uh, someone just corrected me that Galvin got 72. I haven't checked yeah. the updates. Yeah, 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 he did update to 72. So I guess with, with that question about tour picky, um, we'll jump into the, to the Warriors Raiders. Um, I just, I guess, on to a picky kind of mention. I guess he'll miss next week. Um, that's kind of an extra week that CNK can potentially be back to, I guess, force him, um, you know, kind of out of the side. So, if you don't have anyone else to kind of get rid of, I guess to a picky could be a full guy. Um, he ended up on what did he get 35, uh, so it's going to kind of stunt his um, cash growth. But to a Shek got a try, moved to fullback. Um, could even, I guess, play fullback next week if CNK is not there. So I guess that's a good one for for owners. You're a, do you own RTS, Mikey? Yeah, I, I, I did. Yeah, I, I was against him all pre's until I watched him in the trials, and um, I'm glad he's doubled down his trials because he looks um, he's been looking good. Well, I guess 
speaking of front rowers kind of all going down, the one guy who hasn't gone down and keeps just keeps scoring tries, AFB. Another try, only 77 this time. Uh, I think that kind of had to do with the minutes, kind of the, where the game was going. Um, didn't kind of work out for him. But in terms of front row options, we've lost Haas, we've lost Tino. Tarpanay's, uh, I guess, in this game had a poor score. He's kind of seems to be the top front row at the moment. So I guess those that have Tino or have a Haas, unless they're going right down to, to someone much cheaper with a bit of an unknown, um, AFB probably seems the guy at the moment. He's the only healthy front rower and the one that's scoring decent each week. Yeah, uh, agree. He scores the same tries. And I think if you want a premium option to replace a premium option, you go him. But um, the more and more I look at someone like um, a Toikamanu, I'm telling you, have a look at his stats on the weekend. Incredible. I think I just, what, just under 500K. I think for guys that have some of those guys injured, I'd be having a serious look at him. Honestly, uh, there are so many options at the West Tigers, which we'll review when we review that game, but there's there's a lot to look at. I guess a, a big thing out of this game was Luke Metcalf. He's actually the goal kicker now for them. So he's SJ's kind of lost the goal kicking, it seems. I don't know whether that's just injury base or just to kind of manage him, but Metcalf, he's kind of a one that we all looked at to, to fill our 5-8 spot, but we're like, too scared. Uh, a bit of an unknown, too scared. Rather just pay out for someone else. But he's been killing it. Um, it's controlling the attack, which I think is the big yeah. thing. More than Johnson. Like, it's crazy. He's, and he, like, he's not afraid to, I guess, take on the line. So you're going to get a lot of run run points out of him, tackle, bust. Um, does love a show and go. So potentially a, a try as well. Not really much else that I found, I, I guess, from the Warriors. Raiders, they had a lot of high scores in the Raiders. Or uh, decent enough scores. Rapana, um, good old age of what, 34 years old, just somehow banging out big scores at fullback. But uh, I was, thought it was quite funny. He went down, he seems to go down at the uh, 50 minute mark with a cramp every single game. Um, the poor bloke just can't handle it. Um, all the running. Timiko was good as well. Um, actually, Tarpane did update. I thought he was on like 40. He seems to. He was just under updated. 40, yeah, so he's, he's yeah, updated so he's a, a bit. He's gone up things... to 53. Yeah. One guy who I think a lot of owners are going to have to get rid of pretty soon is, is Smithies. Um, plays big minutes, but just doesn't – makes tackles, just doesn't do anything else. He's kind of just a tackle bot. Um, they have Horse, who played um, reserve grade this week, comes back next week, who I think will kind of eat into those middle minutes where I think Smithies may be the main – person to miss out on that so not a priority but i think smithies is one that we're gonna have to get rid of eventually but with other plotters like tupanua um yeah lane had another shitty game it's kind of all of them are just not doing what we wanted or expected from them so another one to look out for is smithies don't expect the um too high scores i think 40 to 45 is kind of be he's kind of his cap going forward um, Hosking, I was surprised played as many minutes as he did. Came off on the came on at the twenty minutes mark, played the rest of the game, um, ended up scoring fifty two. He was the one that you had to get this week for the price rise, but I guess starting off the bench, everyone just stayed away. So I guess those that went there to get the price rise, it, it's paid off for you. Um, but I guess going forward, you're kind of going to expect fifty five to sixty minutes. But then again, Ricky Stewart. That could change that every single week. So yeah. one to kind of watch it going forward. If horse uh, is back this week, that's going to be the biggest thing to look at both of them because I even think like if you needed to sell Smithies this week, you probably could. Um, I think Tupanu is a bit more – I think I'd prefer to sell him. I want to watch one week of Smithies with um, obviously horseback, uh, see if I can juice a bit more out of him because he had a minus break even this week. And then – reassess but probably get ready that he'll have to go uh next week so i kind of yeah i tend to i tend to agree with you there but um i think they probably might um ease horse for off the bench but um yeah there's just too many forwards to feed there and there's too many good forwards to feed uh, and i guess before we move on to the next game ethan strange 29 in base take that as a cheap uh, option i guess those that have him at five eight probably going to be moving him into center wing next week um, with, with Galvin coming in, I probably wouldn't be doing strange to Galvin. Um, just definitely get rid of one of your dead center wings. Um, and then 
you kind of move Galvin in because I think Strange still has money to make. He looks dangerous. He loves to take the line on. He was, you know, inches away from another try barging over. So stick with him. Um, the price rises will be up and down with this guy, I think. Yeah, 100%. Uh, let's go into the next game. I've got more questions, but we'll we'll answer them after. Let's let's speed for another game. All right, uh, big game, Roosters, Rabbitohs. Jeez, the Rabbitohs, just, they don't look good. Um, points are getting put on them. Uh, it's very surprising for, like, I, know, I get they're missing guys, but they've still got a really good quality lineup. And I don't know, Demetrio just can't get what he needs out of him at the moment. So it's good for super coaches. Um, James Tedesco, 135. Prayers go out to Sabs, who did trade him out. But Sabs still had a monster of a week, man. So it didn't bother him. But, um, yeah, I think just the thing that hurts with that one is just 5% owned before uh, people. I think 3,000 bought him in. So I think max 7%. Um, hurt as well because I had him about an hour to a kickoff and then I switched my trades. It turned out that – then again, I'm happy with how Ponga played. And I, I think I was right in saying that. I think Cogger – is going to get more out of Ponga. So at the same time, I'm not unhappy for that. But I just think anyone with Tedesco, the low low percent flying under the radar, you've just that's now about an 80 plus 80k upgrade with another low break. Even they played the Panthers this week. Uh, like the time to get on was last week. I really think the time was to get on last week. Um, but he's just looking so good, and I really thought Tedesco was done as a super coach option, but he's proven us all wrong. Um, over the other side, I did mention him at the start of the podcast that I was keen on him up against a hammer. Dominic Young, like Molotalo, got brought in by the masses. I think he'll be brought in by the masses as well. Low owned, pumped out of 150, 50 the week before. I think he's a great option, but he's only going to be a great option when he scores tries. But he just looks so good in that Roosters back line, and he's going to score plenty of tries. I actually think the Roosters look better without Kiri. I really think Sand and Smith and Walker did so much together. Even before Walker went off with that HIA, uh, he was looking really, really good. Um, and I thought even Sand and Smith, like, he's he's very good. And I feel like he doesn't get enough credit that he is. And I feel like, I don't know, like, they got more out of their back line. And with Dominic Young, he did score 50 the week before with the try. But um, I think he's still a good option. 640K, he's going to have a very low break even this week with that 150 in there. So, realistically, I think... Look, if you can somehow manage to get Hammer and Young in, cool. But I really think it's going to be one or the other if you want to take a center wing this week. But I think they're far beyond the two best options that you can bring in. I guess with that, one's playing the defending premiers and one's playing probably the worst team in the comp. So I think a lot of people are going to be leaning towards Hammer. Um, Yeah. Yeah, So I guess it kind of sucks that the Roosters had such a hard draw, but they've looked fantastic while doing it. It hasn't seemed to matter. Well, a lot of us stayed away from a lot of them, but they're, they're still scoring points to get them. And I even think against Penrith, they can do the same. Because after Penrith, you, the thing is, if you wanted Young, you jump now. After Penrith, they play the Bulldogs, the Knights, back-to-back. Like, that could be a field fest. And watch Dominic Young go nuts against his old club. Then they go Melbourne, then they play the Dragons. So, like, the, the draw is getting better once they get past that Panthers hurdle. So, look, I guess the extra 40K, I guess right now, we're trying to make other moves. Like, oh. Like I, I could, I could really see it working out, and also that 150 stays in his rolling average for two weeks. But um, yeah, it's, that's for you guys to decide. Uh, Joe Manu, 84. Sandon Smith, if he somehow kept his half spot, 88 was really good. Um, Sammy Walker, 56, two tries, but they were they were off kicks, no line breaks from him in them. Um, but he only played like 47 minutes. So uh, both of us are owners, Jake. So to be, I was I was very happy the way they played and. Um, I was spewing with that Cat 1 HAA, but that's been downgraded for the people that don't know. Uh, it was it was more of a neck injury when you looked out of it. And he's been uh, – they appealed. It was successful. So it's been downgraded to a Cat 2. So he'll be able to play on Thursday as long as there's no neck injury and he passes all the fitness tests for them. But other than that, uh, good, good for us because I, I really need that extra number next week. Um, other than that any... – Terrell May, 44. I know there was a question in here somewhere about Terrell May limping off injured. Any news? Look. Yeah, he came off came off at the last three minutes. The Roosters, like like they usually do, they're saying oh, not, not nothing in it, should be fine. Um, so not really anything coming out of that yet. I guess we'll, it's a one to, I guess, look at Tuesday. And, and the fact that they play the first game, it's not really going to matter much. 
Yeah, he's he'll go for scans. We'll work and find out. And yeah, as you said, that's the biggest positive with him. Um, and yeah, Tupanua. Yeah, like, for Tupanua, I was and for the guys that didn't say Wong. Like to me, like if Tupanua was playing eighty yard hold, and I know that tries coming with his scores of thirty and forty with a try, I know it's seventy, but the minutes in this forward rotation is killing me. And if I can turn him into like a hammer or something, I think that's a no brainer. Or if I didn't own um, Kai Pierce Paul. I'd be going over to him this week for him. I think it's fine. I think if you don't have anything to do, I wouldn't force it. Like if I could maybe go him to Galvin via Jules and strain and do all some other, like it's possible. I'd probably look at that. But um, I'm personally just not liking the way their minutes are getting rotated. I think with Tupinua, I, I, I took the gamble to hope he'd get 80 and he hasn't. And his work rate isn't that great without attacking stats. Tend to agree, Jake. Yeah, I'm under the same thing. I guess if if I don't have anyone else to sack, Tupanu is probably the guy to get rid of. I mean, hopefully in the 60 or 55 to 60 minutes he plays, he gets some attacking stats in there. But it's not something you want to rely on. You'd rather have an 80 minute back rower. Um, when you've got KPP playing there, it, it sounds like a no brainer. Yeah, 100%. Uh, over to the Bunnies, Colbert Tungy had a good game. Uh, he scored 98, but I was, I was having a look for it. He only got one line break, uh, but I think it's his tackle bus are ridiculous. I remember looking at it earlier. The very high count in tackle bus. Yeah, he had 13 tackle bus, so 26 points in tackle bus yeah. alone. He was, every time he got the ball, he was just pumping them off. But It's huge. Like, he's always going to be an option because once the bunnies start to click and the tries start coming, like, he's his tackle bus are part of his base in a sense, like his base bus. Like, he's... He's just someone to keep to keep an eye on because there's not many bunnies that have got my attention, but he he's one that has put his hand up. Um, Johnston, all these lowest scores are good because you know when he comes down to a nice price, you jump on for when he goes to break that record. It happens Throw every Cody year. Cody Walker always that as well. It's going to be the same thing yep. for Cody. Yep. Same thing with Cody. Like to be honest, of all these bunnies going, there, like just keep them on your black book because they'll come back and be competitive at some point. Um, the other big one is Latrell Mitchell had a pretty down game, scored 36. Um, sucks to the guys that went um, ponger to him. But, um, you know, just hold tight. The draw opens up a little bit after this or soonish. So I guess that's probably why you're done. Um, apart from that, nothing really else big. I just didn't think that the Dean Hawkins offered too much. Uh, I know they got absolutely butchered and hard to put it all on him, but I'd be putting wide and into the halves and, I guess they might do that when Munro comes back. I guess they're light on options at the moment. Look like you're yeah, going to say something there, Jake. Go for it. No, I was kind of just going to say, yeah, Hawkins and Elias, it didn't really Very matter. similar. <laughs> they were the same. They didn't really offer anything. They've still got pummeled. I mean, everyone says Whiten to, to there, but you look at the centres that are coming, it's it's Richard Kennar. It's yeah, they really have an outside backs to kind of add. So I guess adding Whiten out wide to kind of add something, I guess. Or Jai Gray. I'd be bringing Jai Gray because he looked incredible in the trials. Mm. Like, bring that kid in. That's what I'd be doing. Uh, but we're not coaches. We're just super coaches. And at the moment, I'm a very bad super coacher. All right. Over, oh, to, not much better. Yeah, over to the dogs and the Titans, Jake. Go for it. Well, I think we can say that whoever's versus the Titans is is the team to target, which is the Dolphins next week. And I think it's the Cowboys the week after. So if you own... Ooh. A Queensland team in the next two weeks, or any players from those two teams, you'll be licking your lips because they look goddamn awful. Um, what was it, 32 nil? Kiraz had an absolute day. Uh, I think owners were kind of a bit annoyed the first couple of weeks. He didn't get the attacking stats. Probably put that down to the dogs, not really scoring points. Base-wise, he was still getting 40-plus each game. So I think the fact that we got some attacking stats out of him looked fantastic. Um, 115 he updated to. I think he was on just over 100 um, before updates. So he gets all those offload points and comes in. Uh, Reed Marnie continues to tease us with a 96. Um, i never going Reed Marnie again after what he did to me last year. I know Tim Moody's in the exact same boat. Um, so stay away. Viliami Kikau, I thought, had an absolute like beast of a game. I thought he was fantastic. Another mid-range option. Uh, the first couple of rounds, he was quite ordinary. Um, but this game, it was like the Viliami kick out of old. I guess that kind of had something to do with the opposition they were they were playing. Um, but kick out, if, if we see another game from him, Mikey, is he one that we can consider? 
I think, yeah, if, if he continues to put it up, I definitely agree with you. But my problem with a lot of these Bulldog scores is because they finally got points on the board. So if they're going to go up against harder competition and be like they were last year and not competitive, then I think a lot of these scores down. And when there's points on the board, Kickout's very good at getting amongst that. And I do like the look of him. But I think at this point, I'm very scared of the inconsistent mid ranges, which is why I went all with Kalatu this week. Um, I think I just want guys that can, with the try, can go like 80 80 plus and I know kick out can do that on his day, but I think, you know, if you don't have guns, I'd be looking that way. But if you can, yeah, if, if you can keep it up week in, win out, week out, that's fine. I just know he's got a very low floor, but his price is okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What? 468. I think he's kind of just hit his break even. So I don't really go anywhere. Um, Drew Hutchinson owners. I know a lot of them were kind of about to, to trade him out this week. He's finally got I a did. decent score. Oh, you did trade him out. No, yeah, I mean, it's I'm not, not going to hurt no, you. Yeah. It's only, what, nah. a 64. We're not going to get anything too great from him um, in the next couple of weeks, I don't think. Um, just the fact that they points were scored somewhere and he was involved in in some of them. Um, same as Blake Taff. Uh, Josh Curran was one that was traded in with the news that, well, the, the apparent news that he's going to get front row um, dual status in a couple of weeks. I know a few of our podcast members were a bit upset by that. Um, it was it was, a, it was a topic in the chat um, this week, but I guess fifty two played less minutes than what he has in the last couple of weeks. I mean, they don't know if that had something to do with the result. Um, they could kind of spell in the last ten minutes, um, or if you know they didn't have injuries that that kind of affected him. But fifty two for a potential future front row, I think, is pretty good for the ones that brought him in. I know I brought him in, and I'm pretty happy with it because I think he might have been my highest scoring. Um, back rower, so I'll take that. Um, Salmon, he's one. If you still got him, I think he's one that's kind of going to get rid of. I don't think he's going to make any money. Um, the minutes just keep coming down. He played the, what the first 30, 35 came off, and I think saw the last 10 um, on the edge for Preston. So he's one that I don't think is going to really be making money. So if you got a player that you need to, you know, you need to bring someone in, he's one that I think you can sack for sure. Um, I mean, the fact that you can kind of move in between second row, center, when you can bring in a second row or, or a center, you can flip in with Burbo to, to put in wherever you need to, to bring someone in. Um, anyone else from the Bulldogs, another disappointing day for Hughes. Um, a lot of people kind of being forced into playing Hughes with all these front row injuries. Um, I guess Liam Henry's kind of the one that the front row that you can, or the chief front row that you can bring in to play. Um, I wouldn't be really relying on playing Sam Hughes. Um, so if you do have a front row option, which me and Mikey could uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, or I mean this week, uh, is kind of something that we might need to address. Um, over the Titans, I don't think there's anything good to say about the Titans. Bo no, Firma none somehow of them on my radar up, either. Yeah, I think Bo Firma somehow ended up with 53, I think just in tackles alone because they had zero ball. Um, Jaden Campbell and Fafita are back training, so – Potentially, they could be back this week. I don't think it makes a difference. They were they were terrible. Tana Boyd was like pressured like no tomorrow. There was no support from him. Like they they just looked done. So, like I said, but I guess b- before I started talking about this game, I think Bostocks will play next week for those that had him, and I think Hammer's definitely a target. Um, any Dolphins definitely target for for the Titans because they look shite. Agree. I think I'll be playing five. Five center wings next week. Just I'll be playing both soccer as a number seventeen because, um, yeah, they're they're looking awful, and I know oh, Des is coaching them, but they're looking real bad. Yeah, I guess the big one out of that was Tino getting injured, which ACL, ACL the season. Done. So that's an even bigger hit for the Titans. Yeah, couldn't. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, let's go over to the next game. Dragons versus the Cowboys, twenty-four to forty-six in favor of the Cowboys. They are the only undefeated side to start the year. A lot of us, we had a lot of big chat about targeting Cowboys, and I know a lot of us heavily feature Cowboys, saying that we think will be their comeback year. And they've looked pretty good, and they're going to they're going to be competitive yet again. And there is so many to target. But let's talk about the Dragons. They looked very good, and at the start, in the first 40 minutes, like shit, Dragons are, are going to cause an upset here, and then uh, fell apart like they normally do. And Cowboys monstered them. Um, Zach Lomax. Uh, teased us all last week, we jumped off, but it just shows when there's going to be points on the board, Lomax is going to be scoring points, 98. 
I know Timmy jumped on. Good move for him. Um, same can be said for Ben Hunt, 77. When they're points, these guys are going to be scoring well. Um, I think Lomax is, is a good option if you want a center wing. That's pretty safe. Keeper all year. Um, look, the Dragons are trying. Like this game, they tried at least, especially at the start. So if we can keep seeing that happening, then, you know, some of these guys become a little bit more appealing. Um, just just on Lomax, Marky, do you see him as a final or potential final team centre wing? Uh, I mean, well, in terms of scoring, I think he's definitely up there. I think he is. And the fact he kicks goals, yes. But to me, I kind of see him as five because I reckon off the top of my head, I could pick four easy that I'd have over him. Like I'd, I'd have a, one of Brian Toll and a, a Tago, Marzi Hugh, if he gets back to his best, if not a gag guy, I'd have a Holmes there instead. Um, Ruben Garrick. Like there's already four, one of the guys on the show, like there's already four that I'd put ahead of him. Um, but definitely five. And I think if I have him now or, or I got him, I wouldn't be thinking about selling. Um, no, yeah, not at all. And if, if, as I said, if they say to be competitive, he's only going to get uh, better and better and better. But just shows you again, Dragon scores some points again and he goes close to a ton again. So um, huge game from him. DeBellin with a 70. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder if that's mostly. I'm just having a quick flick. Yeah, a lot of base inside that score, which is except for a try contribution for um, Jack DeBellin. But um, Flanagan, 71, scored a try, had a really good game. Um, looks to be playing his best footy at the Dragons. I mentioned it early at the start. Uh, he did have two line breaks. I'm probably still going to sell him. <laughs> I'm going to take that cash to the bank and uh, just to Galvin. Uh, break even nine for Flanagan this week. So we're probably looking at 40 to 50K. Um, that 150K helps get me the hammer. So I think you can do it. Um, I, I'm not saying he's a must sell, but also he showed last week that if there's not points on the board and he's not getting amongst the points, he's going to be scoring pretty low. He hasn't got a try assist yet off the top of my head. So he's just been scoring the tries. So, um, yeah, that's, that also worries me a bit about him. Um, anyone else on the Dragons front? Uh, Eisenhu, 47. Fellow to Mariner, 40. Uh, Lalua, 55. All kind of canceling each other out and not really looking hard at any of those guys. Tyrell Sloan crashing back to earth with a 38. And for people that jumped on Viliami for feeder instead of Liam Henry, kind of going to pay the price at, you know, saving the 38K. is thing of nine, A emergency. Um and yeah, like if you got the him and Hughes, I'd be very worried and tempted to jump on, you know, like Willison if he continues to stay in that lineup, which he's going to while Haas is out. Um, over to the Cowboys. Timmy with another great move, brought in Valentine Holmes. Jake V seed and looped him if you're just tuning in now, which is huge. Um, man, Holmes burnt me last year at the start. It's kind of why I avoided him this year was a bit too much money for me to spend. And I remember the year before when he was doing this, I didn't have him and it absolutely burnt me. He's doing it again. And I have no plans to bring him in. I just can't see it. I just got to dip and do other moves instead that are going to cost me a lot cheaper. But he is absolutely killing it. The Cowboys are killing it. He's kicking goals. Like He's getting so many points off goals. Um, And their draw, they're versing the Broncos this week, down a lot of men. And you said the week after that, they're versing the Titans. So they stay in Queensland for the next two weeks. And, Man, I can see some big scores from the Cowboys yet again. Uh, some some massive scores. Um, got a few here. As a Cowboys fan, Holmes and Trinkie owner, I'm loving life at the moment. Uh, why wouldn't you be? I only have one of them. Uh, oh, look, Drinky, uh, he's the next one, 105. Had the VC on him. Didn't have the balls to straight seam. I wish I did. Um, if I own Cleary over Hines, I know I would have done VC, Cleary, and the, the C on Drinky. Um, just... I guess one learning from the week is if you have a feeling about a play, just go on safe. So that's probably what I'll do if I bring in Hammond next week. But yet again, I, I think he's a captain option against the Broncos and I think he's a captain option against the Titans. Um, looked good, scored a try for kick, um, getting a bit more confident and was heavily involved this time, which was great. Um, Robson, uh, me and Sabs had a bit of a Robson versus Green argument at the start of the year and uh, I eat my words. Like Robson over him has been amazing. Sucks. I had him a lot and then just upgraded the grant. And he's looking like the best hooker you could have started with, uh, even over Coruscant, since he's got that one game in hand. Um, 95 for him. He was just involved as everything and setting up short ball tries to everyone. Um, McIntyre, 70 with the try. Uh, Dearden, yet again, that's three scores now above 60, 60 70. 
good for owners that started with him at his price point. Finafuiaki, I nailed that name, man. He you, scored a... Mate, you, you mess up Ola Kawatu every time. In, in two two attempts, you've nailed Finafuiaki. Yeah, see, it's just one that my tongue can can do. Well, I, I can't do Ola Kawatu, but we got Finafuiaki, 57. Went off with a HIA, was it, Jake? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, HIA. Pass, come back on. And score a try. Yeah, so bumped it up. But he also kind of just shows you... Without that, he was on 27, plays another 20 minutes. I reckon he only ends up just under 40. Uh, and, but yet and again. It, and it, I guess it looks like Gasowski will, he came on later for him um, after, I guess, the HIA. So he's still going to be kind of locked into about 50 to 60 minutes. Kind of. Would you regardless. be buying now? He's got a 57 in his rolling average if you really needed to. Or would you like, do you think KPP, no questions asked over him? Uh, I yeah. mean, you can't, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a bit more expensive, but I think KPP, if they look the same sort of player, but just an extra 25 minutes, I'd, I'd rather bank on um, than going um, Fine Fuyaki. Yeah, yeah, fair call. Ruben Cotter with 47. To look to get injured very late. Um, they reckon with what the physios, uh, NRL physio was saying, he reckons that it could only be one to two, but that's just, you know, pre-injury but he hasn't had any scan so yeah well i mean yeah the, the cow the, the cows kind of said after it that it's yeah not as serious as as it looks so he could even be fine for next week uh they, yeah. they weren't worried too much about it and um obviously Laybutt was a late scratching and also tamalolo with a 12 and looks like a must so <laughs> if you still have him because he's gonna drop yeah. what little cash he has left um, just a few more questions. We're five games in. We're doing pretty good with time. Let's go. We'll go over to the super coach experience, which would be Savs. Fanua Pole, uh, Paul Pole, Pole. I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, 59. And yeah, good shout, Savs. But if you didn't hear me uh, before at the start, I, I, I'm all over a Toikamanu over him. Um, I guess he costs about 65 uh, K less, but um, I think a Toikamaya, yeah, 67. Safe half looked good on the week, and I don't know if he's going to keep playing lock over him. He started safe half, started last week, this week. Polo starts. So, um, yeah, also also another good option if, you know, you need to get off Terrell May and that if it's a long-term injury. But I think one of the Tigers' front rollers could be a solution. Um, paycheck, getting rid of Hines. Lucky I kept Ponga. Can't argue anyone getting rid of Hines, or you think it's like, Oh, look, I think I see the argument for both. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of money uh, to be holding. I mean, if you can get off him to someone and then spread that money out, go, go for it. He's looked poor. Sharks were, were quite poor this week. Still managed to get 50. I think he upgraded to 53 or something. So without doing anything, he's still getting enough points. Uh, is, is this the segue into into the, the next game, is it? Yeah, I guess this can be the last question before we move on to to that, this game. But just on his point, yeah, maybe Heinz to Cleary in the long run, like it's not going to be good for me. But to me, it's a way I can snag Cleary. But I do think he'll come good. But if he doesn't come good instantly, he's he's going to lose about 100K this week. He's still got 890. I see from me going him straight to Cleary or maybe up for 20K. If he keeps going shit over the next two, three weeks, has that buy the week after this one. He could lose 150 to 200 k, and then you jump back on for like Sam Walker to Heinz. That's just what I'm thinking. Otherwise, if I don't do that, and what I said just happens, then getting clear is going to be so tough. And it does. I don't think at the moment it matters who the Panthers are versing because I think um, Cleary can score well against any of them. Yeah, I mean, as, as long as they're not having back rollers defending out in the centers, which has happened the last two weeks. Um, they kind of, yeah, and I mean, he Cleary uses it. Point on him. Yeah. Uses it. Yeah. He just gets the ball, goes straight at that back rower who's defending out there and makes him look like an absolute fool. <laughs> uses Tago. He's got the best inside man to do so, but like just absolutely using Tago. Cutting out to him. But, anyways, no, no, enough about the Pampers. Let's go. Tigers and Sharks. I like how we've somehow managed to make it so I have to talk about this game, Mikey. Thanks. Oh, it that. was just a lack of lack of the draw, mate, but I'm so glad. Go for it. Uh, yeah, the Sharks, my Sharks managed to get towed up by the Tigers. Uh, Jazzy made sure to, to let me know about it um, every <laughs> single minute. Um, Coruscant, I guess, 
is the big one out of this. 105, he looked absolutely fantastic. Could you say, with the buy being done for him, he might be the top hooker in Supercoach? Got the goal kicking. I agree. I 100% agree with you. And I think he'll be in the top three most traded in, probably the most traded in. And the fact that I did the move I did last week, this kind of segues into a question. Like, would you hold Grant frustrating, not worth the price tag from Stefanos there? Um, I honestly, if I didn't sell Grant last week, would there buy this week? Grant's going okay. I think I would do the Grant to Harry Grant. Oh, sorry. Grant to Coruscant, uh Bank 130K and just watch Coruscant rise because – he looks phenomenal, so good. And the fact that I now have Lusick and Levi, I think I'll just be short from going Levi to, to Coruscant. But I think I'm just going to have to deal with my hooker crisis. But, yeah, he looks he looks to, to be on fire. Yeah, he, he definitely tore us, um, tore us to shreds. Uh, Buller was good, 81. Olam, first game for the Tigers, he was, he was good. Um, I guess a couple of attacking stats in there. What do you have? A try, a couple of line breaks. He's um, at a good price. He's at a pretty good price. Four twenty three, or four oh, four twenty. Four twenty. Um, it's not so horrible. It's decent enough price. Um, and I guess if we keep getting the Tigers, you know, constantly attacking, he could be one that you can kind of jump off one of your middling guys who's really not going too good. Um, I guess, I guess uh, another one, I said Coruscant, the big one. I guess Galvin, updated to 72. He looks an absolute must yeah, as a cheapie. I think he's going to be the most trade in this week um, for sure. Um, don't really think about it. Just get him in. That break even is going to be heaps low. He just looks such a footy player. Um, takes a line on. He's just got confidence for being what he's 18 years old. He's just got the confidence of a footy player. Um, we're kind of worried that he, you know, might be in and out of the side. I think Sullivan's, it's just, they're not even going to worry about him. I think the big one could be um, Finu. Uh, he plays half for him. He's one of the Finus. I think he's one that um, once he's fit, he could put pressure on Galvin um, from the Tigers. But the way he's playing. And the fact that the way he's playing. over the other two halves, just like Aaron says, who do you think of must-haves going into next round? I think he's pretty much close yeah. to a must-have. Pretty good security. I know he's if he starts going bad, this is an easy one to slot him. But that break even, Tigers looked really good on the weekend. Uh, the draw isn't too bad. They're playing the Easter Monday clash against the Eels, where I think could be a points fest. Um, yeah, I think it's. I think he's as close to a must-have for next week. Uh, second row is Mikey. Um, I think you are keen on this guy, IPAP. Um, I said it last week. Got to try. Didn't play the full game, though. Um, I don't know whether that was just managing him with, with the game kind of being won or whether it's part of their rotation. But five five just under 570K, he's kind of one that, you know, he's quite cheap. He's not, you know... Not much to get off, you know, a, a Sean Lane, a Foam, or all these guys who have been a bit a bit poo lately. Um, not much to get off him. And we've seen in the past, he's like gun status. He can be a gun. And the way he's playing for the Tigers, they use him a lot. Offloads, good um, hole runner, um, getting attacking stats. Definitely one to look at um, kind of in the next couple of weeks, I guess, before he kind of gets out of reach or up until that um, echelon price. He'll have a good break even this week because he got 67 the week before. Um, I guess because I got Olkalatu, I'm not going to grab him, but I don't think he's a bad option. Obviously, the try and fade the score, but if you can't afford a top shelf gun second row and that price range is nice for you, then I, I don't mind it at the price um, as all these mid range go on mud. So I, I'd, I'd consider a lane to IPAP. I think that would personally be a good trade. So, yes, we, we talked a bit about front rails being mud. Uh, we have mentioned already. Steph, 60 minutes. Um, Fanil Pole, 58 minutes. I don't know if that was kind of the minutes were increased because of Twal um, in his stint coming off kind of earlier than they'd want. He only played, I think, 17 minutes. Um, Maybe for yeah, Pole, but I think injury. I think Atoy Kamanu had similar minutes last week. Yeah, he played. So Atoy Kamanu played 54 minutes last week, so a little bit more. But his PPM is doing plays. It's not too bad at the moment. So if you can keep up around those minutes for the price point that you're paying, I think um, you could do a lot worse. I mean, mean, so like I'm sick of wasting trades on front rolls, but this is just comes out a lot of front rolls like Tino's out. 
Um, and obviously Terrell and Cotter under a question mark. These could be options if you need a front row this week. They, yeah, I really like him as an option. Yeah, I, I don't mind him either. But yeah, like you said, I'm kind of done with with making moves at front yeah. row. Um, Unless I'm forced to. One one cheaper who's who's on the bubble and will be increasing price is Fatape. Um, looks quite good in this game. He defended well. First game, he, I think he had a lowish score. So the break even won't be... Disallowed try? He did have a disallowed try. Uh, still got 38, though. So still, you know, a decent score. Bottom 21 dollar. last week. 21 kind of hurt. Uh, but I guess if you kind of need a, to make a bit of money, if you've got to say a salmon... Um, well, Burbell was pretty poo today as well. If you've got these guys and you need to make a bit of money um, to kind of do a move, he's one you kind of put in. I, I think he's won that spot. They don't really have anyone else to come back. I think Stafford Toa is, you know, a long way away. Cindus Moses, so he's six to eight. Um, and even then, I think Fatape's done enough to, to kind of earn his spot. I mean, they won the game. They're not going to really drop anyone there. So if you kind of need a guy to, ma- to make money and you downgrade someone, I think he's a decent enough option because... His security's oh, no, gotten better with um, mm. Stafford Tory out for a little bit, but um, yeah, I, I tend to, I tend to agree with you there that maybe th- this week there are so many guys to trade in, and I think to people that have already used their boost, like I honestly think it, it could be another good week to boost. I know I probably there's so many options, and we don't know when these cheaper options are going to dry up. So depending on the, I know you're going to save them at some point, but it just looks like another. A big, th- a big week of thinking because there are a lot of guys to consider. But I think for Tarpe, obviously, he's one you can wait on. He probably won't be bottom dollar next week, uh, but the week after. But you, you're not going to have to pay too much to jump on if he has a big one. No, not at all. And, yeah, like you said, they're taking stats will come. Over the other side of the park, uh, my crappy Sharks, who, you know, Sammy to sleep disappointed again. Uh, Hazelden, I guess, the only shining light. Um, I guess pun intended being in bold. Uh, 90 points, scored a try. Take that, take, take that away. Still scored pretty good. You know, 60 in base. Looked fantastic. I guess the thing with that is quite a few injuries. So, I mean, they had, well, Royce Hunt go down before, in, just just warming up on the sideline. Uh, so, I guess that kind of took one rotation player out. Um, Fanukin was off. Um, HIA, he failed his. Um, and there was someone else, uh, Toby Rudolph, came off injured as well. So they were down to one player on the bench, so these guys have to play big minutes. If you're trying to fix your front row um, situation, I don't think Hazelton is your guy. Talakai, again, like Mikey said, kind of at the start, he brought him in. He looked good. Um, one of our uh, – another player that I guess could, you know, say that he did a good enough job, so you can kind of say, yeah, Talakai, good trade in. Um, attacking more attacking that's will come that we've seen in the last couple. Ronaldo, I think, got a bit lucky at the end. I think he got a couple of line breaks late. Yeah, he happens. was on like twenty something for for the last until like the last ten minutes. Ended up on fifty six. Um, Nico Hines, I guess, is the big talking point. A lot of people like yourself looking to get rid of him to say Nathan Cleary, um, take the price drop, bring him back later. Um. 53 up, updated to doing nothing. Uh, a lot of people are saying Trindle's the thing. I guess Trindle being the kind of the, the problem in there is that he's kind of, when I'm watching, he's kind of getting in the way or, or he's getting the ball and kind of being off the place of where the play needs to be um, affecting Hines. Uh, early on, I thought Hines was on. I mean, he was getting the ball. Um, like getting his hands on the ball, you know, three, four times a set and looking to do something with it. But then his confidence just got shot. He kicked two balls out in the full. Um, so I guess the big one is, would you would you hold or sell? I think I'm going to hold. I know you're under the under the, the thing to you can't miss on Cleary right now. Hines goes, I guess, he plays Raiders <sighs> next week, then he goes by, where Cleary you got for two weeks, then by. So I guess... The, the, it's not it's not an easy trade. It's it's not an easy trade. Like uh, I'm I'm agreeing. Yeah, I like if I have a front row issue, then I I hold on to Hines. But I'm willing to jump off because I don't like what I've saw, and I can jump back on later if if I need to. But Cleary's clear. The way I look at it from both of them is I got it wrong. Cleary looks like who can score 200 first out of both of them, and I'm saying Cleary and the Panthers 
they've had a tough run, but they've two big games. I know some injuries in them, two big games and oh, I'm just a little scared. Even against the Roosters, who looked very good, I still think there can be some points in there. And uh, then Panthers sure kind of gets a lot better after their first buy. So I definitely think uh, if my front row situation is okay and I only have one injury in there, I think I'm going to hold that person and I will probably boost to do Heinz to clear, which you might say is not worth it, but I'm just going to do it. And it is what it is. Yeah, if if, you, if, if Heinz not passing the eye test, it, it completely makes sense. I guess the thing with, with Heinz the high is... high BE. Lose, yeah, I mean, he's going to lose 100K this week, so you're kind of almost going to be paying, I think, for Nathan Clear. I don't know what his break even was, but scoring a one It was high. It was high, so he just won't lose. Yeah. So I think I've got to spend 30K to do it. So I've worked my math, and I can do it and still get the hammer or young. So that's why I think that's a sign. <laughs> it's a sign. It's a sign, and, and then it's, it's going to come out on and tomorrow's like Mikey's Mikey's messed his maths up and he's he's missed, he's missed it. No, I, I I'd want to be able to get young, but I know I'll be able to get Hammer, and that'd be because I grabbed Talakai over Mortalo. So although I'll be, I'm really pissed off with my moves this week, I might be really happy about him after next week's round. So let's hope I'm setting up to something here. All right, well I'm done talking about the Sharks losing, so I'm I'm good to move on for the for the next games, Mikey. If you don't have anything else. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. We have a flood of questions, so we'll only answer a couple more uh, at the end because uh, it's getting late. We're going to really start. All right, we've got two games to go through. Parramatta and Manly, 28-24. This was a great game of footy. Tipped Manly. This was a hard one to tip. Spewing with the end result, but good back and forth game. Lots of tries in there. At first, I'm like, oh, here we go. Tom 150 plus, and then back on the foot pedal a little bit. Um, Mitchell Moses, uh, I know a lot of guys jumped off. Is he an option again? 109 possibly looks good, but um, looks very good. And they, they, they come alive at Bankwest Eels. Back at Bankwest next week, I'm pretty sure, against, I know, Tigers, their regular Easter Monday clash. Um, other than that, I mentioned him earlier, Blaze Tualangi, or Talangi, if I'm probably saying that wrong, 66, scored a try. Looks very good. Um, because of Ola, the main thing that made me think is how bad Morgan Harper and that were going to be. So I grabbed him thinking he'd score a try against him. Didn't happen. But they did leak a few trials on that edge, mainly through Morgan Harper. But Blaze looked very good. And if maybe even when um, Simonson comes back, he could hold his spot over Morgan Harper. Um, so... Problem being that you got Simonson and Sevo back. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm forgetting about Sevo. So... He yeah, probably so disappears. Probably fall out. But one to, to put on the note board because with that 66 to start him off, uh, even, you know what I mean, that's already one out of three that he had to yeah. play. So I guess someone that's going to be on the watch list, it might be better to have him off later. Um, Dylan Brown, another 50 try, uh, try assist. Like, it's a tough one. I don't think I'll be looking to sell. There's so many other big problems, but he's looking very live, a big game. And all he... The, all these trices is about four that Sean Lane keeps dropping. Uh, he's setting it up. He's moving it. He's looking good. But he's just not getting more than one try assist a game. And I think i um, already going to take a bit of a money loss. I'm just going to persist with him and trust in him because I know, you know, at the end of last season, he really started killing it. I think we haven't seen the best out of the Eagles yet. So I'm going to hold on. Um, Guffo for owners, 38. Probably in my book, with all the other big fullback options firing, I'd probably jump off him. Um, Sean Lane, 35. I think it's time to go as well. I know we had that 70 last week, but it just shows you without these tries, he's mud. Um, and I'd be upgrading or I'd be going him to KPP this week and banking 100K for sure. And I guess just quickly, I guess the thing with Lane is he, he, he just doesn't look like the Sean Lane that we had two years ago. He just looks off. like He's not passing the eye test, so... Yeah, if if I was a shame, a Sean Lane owner, I'd uh, yeah happily jump off. Yeah, and then the other one, Joey Lusick shows us what he can score without attacking stats, and I'm spewing. I know this was the risk, but 32. I know this is obviously these two games we're talking about a pre updates. It's shit. I don't think there's anything I can do to recover it. I think I'm just going to have to cop the loss with him early until I can make a move later, uh, as I think I could make up points by getting a camera in that. I think by getting plays like that, I can make up the points. But um, he looks really good in actual in Arrow Bar. And there was a – he nearly – he likes to go himself a lot. He nearly scored a try yet again today. So I do think the attacking stats will come. Uh, hopefully updates closer to the end of 40, but he's still going to make some good cash. But, yeah, just kind of spewing that I got him as a starter. Uh, over to Manly. Garrick proving that he's a top four centering 
where year in, year out. It doesn't matter where this guy plays. He looked – to me, he was the best manly player on the field. He was awesome. 95, kicking all their goals. And, yeah, he got a try assist, trying there on his own. And just just looks so good. Um Tommy Turbo, 79, was on 60 at halftime, and I thought uh, he'd be tonning up for sure. Hasn't updated, but looks looks very good. As a non-owner, like I'm scared every time I watch him, but there's other fullbacks that are scaring me a bit more. And if I had the choice to jump off one of my fullbacks, I'd probably go to Tedesco before I went to Tom, even at that 800K price range, because he just looks like he's controlling all the attacks, where with Manly, they seem like they've got plenty of options and they're all sharing it between each other. But... Look, yet again today, Tom got denied that try, uh, which looked to be a forward pass anyways. But, like, it could have easily been 120 plus today. So, uh, it's fine. Uh, Jackson Paulo, 63. Uh, Ovacolato, 51. No attacking stats. That's kind of his flaw as a, now an owner. Shit score to get him in for when, like, Teddy went big. But I think the biggest scores are going to come. And, uh, yeah, like, you know, with a try, I'm looking at 80 plus. That's what I want from my second rowers. Um, then for Manly, Luke Brooks with 50. Still good for the price you brought him in at. Um, and I guess the only other one I really want to talk about is Ben Trevojevic. Absolute mud. He's going to have that um, big score go out of his rolling average now. His break even is going to instantly go back up. He probably, He's going to only make 40K, and his break even will go right back up. Um, with these center wing options, like he might be a tray. If you could do um, a Galvin to Ben Travojevic via jewels, I, I'd consider it maybe. Um, maybe you, you wait another week, uh, but he's looking like you might need to get rid of him sooner rather than later because his base yeah. is just awful. And, and he also came off with about 15, 20 to go, I think. So uh, Schuster, I know, is looming around in reserve grade, so there could, there could be that as well. His break even is going to be about 35 next week as well. So That's I guess... The, hit. And looks like someone you can't play. I played him again this week, but I played him more so, so I had an option to loop. Uh, but yeah, didn't work out. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be playing him. And maybe if I could do a K, if I had him in my second row and I could do him to Kaipi Sport, I'd go for that. Um, yeah, let's switch over to the last game, the Knights versus final, the Storm. Final games. It was quite quite a good game considering, I guess, the, the, in, the inexperienced halves that I, both teams kind of had. Um it was kind of the two fullbacks that, that went well. I kind of put them both in the collective. Pappenhausen, he looked fantastic. Ponga, um, half-burnt um, sellers, depending on who they went to. If they went to Teddy, obviously they're cheering. If they went to someone else like Luttrell, ouch. Um, but he, d- he did look like heavily involved in the game. Um, one try assist, um, only one try assist and still scored a 76. Uh, he looked more like more, himself. More like himself. I think the fact that we did bring in, they did bring in Cogger helped him a lot. Um, Gamble was quite ordinary at times as well. So there's every chance that Gamble gets replaced next week for, for someone else. Um, maybe the but fact see, as won. long as Cogger stays there, I think the hold is going to be beneficial for Ponga with his draw opening up. And although I would have loved to jump onto Desco, I'm happy with dropping the cash because Ponga. Yet again, if he can continue this, he's got a big score coming. And if someone like Cogger, just someone that can steady the ship, allows him to play his game. And me and Jake said it last week on the podcast. That's why we thought maybe one of the reasons that they put Cogger in there. Um, obviously, they wanted to get a win and they were desperate for one today, but also to get Ponga more involved. Sorry, Jake. Back to you, mate. Uh, Gagai was, was the pick of the Knights. Top scored, 84. Got a try. Um, take the try out. Still gets 50 points. And we saw that last year. Absolute base that monster in the center wing. Um, you did say, you know, he's a potential top um, four at the end. Um, 100%. So I guess, I guess we, we saw that from him. The big one out of this, KPP, played the full game. Um, everyone was kind of worried about Lucas being on the bench. He came on, played on the right edge. Frizzell went to the middle. So I think, uh, like myself, who was a bit nervous on KPP, he's one that's that I'll be looking to bring in next week. Um, I know 34 points in tackles. Alone, so Which he should be his break even by about what fifty ish. So expect to make about forty ish k, thirty thirty five k. Um, so he'll still be around that three hundred eighty k mark. Just still think makes him a, a bring in. 
um, for myself. Leo Thompson, I guess the front row that had a decent score last week, minute wise, kind of came crashing down back to a forty-seven. But anyone else from the Knights was was kind of insignificant in terms of score wise over to the the Storm. We shot top score for them, top score for the game with ninety-two. Um, early on, he both halves were kind of pretty ordinary for the Storm, but he got a show and go try in there. Um, and somehow ended up with a, with a 92 um, with, with only that try. So pretty good. I guess Pappenhausen was was the main guy for them. Um, he could have easily had a much bigger score. Like he made line breaks and then whoever he passed it to just dropped it or it just kind of killed the play. Um, so I guess after the buy, um, fullback-wise, he's going to be someone that a lot of people will target. I know they even targeted him, him, him this week knowing that he was going to go up in price, but... Going forward after the buy, I think Pappenhausen is one definitely to watch because although he's not goal kicking, I mean, there's only what a couple of fullbacks that are actually goal kicking for their side. He's definitely one at that price that he looks looks so dangerous. And when they get their halves back, even more so f- for them. Um, Nick Meany, decent score. Um, I guess the, the big one that's highly owned, Harry Grant, Mikey, 63. Have the has the buy next week. Um, I assume that everyone's second hook is either going to be Lassick or Denny Levi. Would do you think it's a good idea to, to go to Appy Corusau? He's obviously the, the main picket hooker. Assuming you didn't trade um, Grant this week, would you have traded oh, this I week did. to Corusau? Yeah, I said it earlier. I, th- I think I would for sure. Um, I, of course, Grant's going to be a big opportunity. He's got those big scores coming by looming Corusau firing. Very low break, in, break even for Coruscant. If you want Coruscant and you like how the Tigers look, you've got to make the move this week. So I'd be pretty tempted to do that move. Uh, obviously, Harry Grant will lose a bit of money this week, but you could still make 130k from that move. And that 130k could help you get the hammer or help you fix a position that you really need to fix and might help you upgrade Samuel Hughes or a front roll that's absolutely potting that you need to repair. So... I'd heavily consider it. Um, the fact that I now, by making that move last week, I'm going to be missing out on Coruscant sucks, but you can't own everyone. But um, at the same time, I don't think he's a must-sell. I, I only kind of really like it to that move for you know the upcoming week's moves. Um, I guess before this game, Chan was a laid out. Uh, I think he had an infection in his hand. They said he'd be back in two weeks. Uh, so Bloor came in, played half a game. Um did he? Bradley got moved out. Bradley got moved out to the yeah, centers got, yeah, because of the right. injury to Remus Smith. So he didn't. What, you didn't end up seeing if he was going to come in at the second row rotation, which I assume. Yeah. Would have. Well, I remember seeing Trent Liero out on the edge for for Bloor, so he did come off late, but it was yeah, seventy something minute. But not really much to take out of in terms of options for either of these sides. I guess um, the fact that the Storm were without both their halves kind of means that both their halves that play in this game are not really options. And yeah, they only they just lost. They only just lost. Mm. And Chan, he, I, I assume he's going to come back into that starting second row. spot. it's just going to be who's on the bench with him. If someone like Sean Bloor's on the bench with him, you'd be a bit worried, but he's bottom dollar and he's still got a minus break even. So with the buy next week, that is not a headache that we need to worry about. Uh, anyone else that you wanted to? No, I'm, Unless you want to bring on any, uh, bring up anyone. I'm no, I'm happy, happy to, to go to wrap it up. Yeah, happy to wrap it up. Sorry to the questions we didn't get to. We're well, obviously been gone for an hour and ten minutes, and it is late on a Sunday. So, um, good luck to everyone that bounced back this week. If you're like me and you're still going absolute shit, there's always another round. Although probably there's always another round. Don't don't give up. There's been times where I don't give. It's it's only round three. Um, there's plenty of time to come back. And looking ahead, it looks to be another. Big week to make some moves and also another big – like there are some nice mashups going out there as we head into Easter round. Uh, thanks for joining me as always, Jake. Uh, are you going to make your way out to any games next weekend? I don't know where Uh are. Not at this stage, but never know. If some tickets magically fall in my lap, I'm sure I'll be going to a game. Yeah, I was on the fence about the Roosters versus Panthers game. I've always wanted to – I wanted to go to this new Allianz, but at the same time, I'm just like oh, I might just – want to watch it at home after working on Thursday, but might be a late in. 
All right, guys, thanks for tuning in uh, on this Sunday wrap-up and tune in on Tuesday with Savs and Tim for your post-TLT podcast uh, where they'll wrap it up, uh, wrap up TLT, give their insight, and uh, feel free to ask them the questions that we might have missed out on because a lot of the things we posted will be answered uh, as we'll know who's been named. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Peace.